let's step through this um, as intensity is increasing so the listener can appreciate what changes are happening with regards to the substrates that are being used to produce energy, where that energy is being produced. And Inigo, it may, it may make sense here to start introducing zones. I think people have heard you know, zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four, zone five. So if you think it's a good idea, perhaps as we're talking about the changes that are occurring with regards to how energy is being produced and where it's being produced, we can kind of pair that with the zone slash intensity. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, the way I see zones is from, uh, you know, like a cellular uh, metabolism glasses, right? Um, uh, So I see, for example, this is also based on the muscle fiber recruitment pattern, which is going to also um, uh, elicit different uh, fuel utilizations and fuel partitioning, right? So when we start exercising very easily, like a very easy walk, for example, or, or a very easy bike ride for those ones who are fit on the bike, um, the body prefers to use fat for energy purposes. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't use glucose, right? Because we, we also use uh, glucose. Uh, the, the, there is a miscon. Uh, misconception that at low intensities we do not use glucose we do use glucose and this is i've been for almost two decades uh, measuring in the laboratory fat and carbohydrate oxidation rates at, 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 at the wide range of exercise intensities all the exercise intensities and seeing in grams per minute how much uh, uh, how many carbohydrates and, and, and fatty acids uh, you uh, burn or oxidize at different intensities, right? Which has helped me tremendously to understand the bioenergetics and metabolic map, as I call, of, of what are the series of events of different intensities. So again, at, different, at, 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 at slow intensity, we, we, we deploy a lot of the fat um, um, and then we use a little bit of glucose, right? It's very low intensity, and we we deploy, we recruit the slow twitch muscle fibers. That's what I called uh, zone one, right? Uh, and again, when it comes to zones, the multiple zones, people have different uh, um, terminologies and, and interpretations. I'm I'm just giving you mine, right? Um, so so then, as exercise intensity increases, then the, the muscle contraction gets faster, right, and stronger. So uh, in, it, it needs a higher metabolic demand to produce ATP. So that's what uh, you start uh, burning even more fat, right? But you also start burning more glucose also, but uh, not as much uh, fluctuation in glucose uh, utilization as it is in fat, right? So And this, so- this glucose at this stage is being being used to produce energy within the mitochondria. All of this is still occurring in the mitochondria. Normally, yes, because it's uh, the glycolytic flux, as we call, uh, it allows the velocity of the glucose to be used uh, through pyruvate in mitochondria. Yes, uh, although some is uh, reduced or transformed to lactate in, in the cytosol of the cell, and therefore uh, there's a little bit of lactate production, which is also coincides with this intensity. A little bit, which is about baseline levels, or a little bit about baseline levels, Right. But but this is where, um, at this intensity that I call zone two, this is where you um, uh, reach a point where you oxidize the highest amount of fat, right? Um, and, and this is a key point because uh, fat is oxidized exclusively in mitochondria, right? So when you reach a point where you um, achieve the maximum fat oxidation, is like, yeah, you're putting those mitochondria to work at uh, that uh, bioenergetic system, which is the, the fatty acid oxidation and uh, oxidative phosphorylation to the max. So this is what I, I use this zone uh, to prescribe exercise as this is what I see that this is where you oxidize the most amount of fat. So we can see uh, in many people when we do this test in the laboratory, we can see that this um, we can we can translate this into heart rate, for example, or into pace or into power, um, so that 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 is the exercise intensity that releases the highest fat oxidation. 
um, then we we start we continue increasing the uh, exercise intensity and the metabolic demand it becomes even larger right so you need to produce ATP faster and this is where there, there's an inflection point where fat cannot um, uh, continue producing ATP at the same rate as before so this is where glucose yeah, um, is um, called in uh, at a higher rate because uh, ATP from glucose uh, is produced signif significantly faster than from fat, right? So that's when glucose starts to be recruited. And then you see in, 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 in the laboratory at this intensity, you see that um, um, a fat starts to drop significantly. There's a significant drop in fat oxidation and there's a significant increase in um, um, glucose um, oxidation or utilization. And, and at the same time, you see also a, uh, an inflection point also for lactate because lactate and glucose go together. As I was saying earlier, it's about glucose flux. The higher the glucose flux into the cell, the higher the lactate accumulation, right? So, so this is what's starting to happen in this zone three that I call, which is a transition zone before we enter a whole different um, um, uh, bioenergetic uh, terrain, which is glycolysis. This episode is proudly brought to you by Inside Tracker. Track your blood biomarkers, understand your biological age, and receive personalized lifestyle tips backed by evidence to optimize your health. To get started with Inside Tracker today and get 20% off your first purchase, head to insidetracker.com forward slash Simon. That's insidetracker.com forward slash Simon for 20% off. Uh, exercise intensity is now so hard that fat can no longer provide ATP uh, or, or uh, you know, like, uh, or be a substrate for ATP production, right? And this is when uh, you need to uh, start deploying um, um, uh, fat, I mean, carbohydrates and glucose. And this is what we see that at this intensity, fat oxidation completely disappears. Uh, it's gone. At the same time, uh, you see an, uh, a big increase in glucose oxidation and a sharp increase in uh, lactate uh, because of the glucose flux. And this is also what lactate also has the uh, um, uh, endocrine, paracrine, and autocrine um, uh, functions. So the, the endocrine function of lactate is that when accumulates in the cell and cannot be metabolized in mitochondria, it goes to the blood. And it goes to the blood, it inhibits lipolysis, uh, which is the breakdown of fatty acids from adipose tissue. So when it inhibits lipolysis, you're not going to be able in the first place to, to bring the, the, the fatty acids to, to the muscles to be burned, right? And then secondly, and we, we have published this recently two years ago, that we saw and we demonstrated that lactate as an autocrine um, a function, it also inhibits the fatty acid transporter. So in, 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 in the muscles, fatty acids, they, they have a door, which are the CPT1 and CPT2 in, my, in mitochondria, outside and inside mitochondria, they transport fatty acids, right? So lactate inhibits both doors. So when you have a high glycolytic uh, flux and you use a lot of glucose, the fat disappears for several reasons. First, because of necessity to produce ATP, right, at a faster rate. And second, because the uh, uh, actions of lactate on both adipose tissue and also on, on the transporters for fat. So it's a way to to uh, a fit forward mechanism, right, to, to kind of get fat out of the way and say, hey, fat, you're done. Your job is done. Now we go into glucose. And this is what I call the zone four, right? Uh, or people call also lactate threshold, although there are many interpretations of lactate threshold also, of or FTP, functional threshold power, etc. right? And then, but all this is aerobic. All this is 100% aerobic uh, metabolism, right? Although this is what I was mentioning earlier, the misconception is like we're already in the anaerobic state and that's why people call it anaerobic threshold right we're still aerobic right then we move on into the the, the next uh, phase which is it's 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 an intensity that this is where you reach your view two max this is an intensity where uh, uh you max your aerobic capacity right your lactate it's off the chart your your glucose 
utilization in the glucose flux in, in the cells of the chart. There's no fat oxidation either, but you're, you're at, at, at the intensity where you um, uh, have the highest aerobic capacity. Uh, and, and this is the VO2 max. And I call that the zone five, right? And then lastly, we call, I call the zone six, which is pure anaerobic. Uh, this is where we're talking about sprinting or about efforts that last two or three minutes, right? Where uh, that um, oxygen that you were referring to earlier is not enough, uh, or even glucose is not enough to, to maintain, I mean, to synthesize ATP and, and, and then the muscles, they need the ATP that's stored in the muscles already without the need of, of, of oxygen. Okay. I have a lot of questions. That was beautifully explained. Let me, let me try and summarize some of that and you can let me know if I've got anything wrong. Um, but at, at lower intensities, the body is, is using the oxidative phosphorylation system, this aerobic energy production system, whereby energy is being produced within the mitochondria. And at, at very low intensities, that's primarily but not exclusively being being done by using fat as a substrate. There is some glucose, and that's uh, fat is predominating as the substrate of choice at sort of zone one and two. And then as you start to go up above zone two, you start to see an increase in the amount of aerobic glycolysis. So using glucose to produce uh, ATP within the mitochondria and the oxidation of fat starts to go down as you go up from zone th three to zone four. But all of this is still aerobic. And then once you go into zone five, you start to get this anaerobic glycolysis. So we're now able to produce ATP from glucose without the presence of oxygen. Um, and then above that, is that where the phosphocreatine system would kick in, the, the sort of third energy system? Yeah, the ATP phosphocreatine, yes, exactly. It's, it's what's stored in the muscle already, and it doesn't require oxygen for that, yeah. And that's a pure aerobic uh, system that we have, right? Everything else is aerobic. There, there are some like uh, sparks of an, an, an aerobic metabolism, right? But, but yeah, this is like a, the, the predominant is always aerobic. Mm -hmm.